Greetings everybody and welcome to my 7 days to die alpha 18 modding tutorial. We are now on episode 12. In the last episode guys, we discussed how to alter some of the basic properties of traders. We had a look at the buy markup and the sell markdown. We had a look at the quality mod and the currency items. We actually swapped the currency to be old cash. And we also had a look at some of the trader info and adjusted the opening and closing times to be bang on 4 and 10 p.m respectively so now the trader will open earlier close a little bit later and he will actually charge you slightly less for buying stuff and actually buy stuff from you for more which is really really cool um so in this episode guys we're going to go ahead and get into um a few more things with traders right so currently what we've had a look at is uh, we've completely ignored this trader item group stuff here and now we're going to get into this in a little bit but before we get into that, there's going to be a couple of things that we want to do first. So last episode, we covered in the trader info here, we covered the open and close time. But what I want to do now is let's go ahead and say the trader doesn't stock enough inventory for our liking, right? Let's say, you know, he doesn't doesn't really stock that much good stuff. and We wish he had more stuff. There's a couple of ways which we can do this. But the main thing you want to look for is the min inventory and the max inventory. This displays the minimum and maximum number of items a trader will display on his list at any one time. Now, there's a few things here. Um, the full reset equals true means that every few days he will go ahead and reset as up to the maximum number of items specified in his list. Now, the minimum and maximum number of items he swaps each time is defined here. The min item swapped and max item swapped. In this case, um, it's both equal to 20. OK, so what this says right here is it says every three days. So reset interval is three right here. Swap 20 items that you currently have for 20 new ones. That's pretty much all it says. Um, and then so 20 of these between 40 and 80 items are going to be swapped. And that means that some of the stuff you sold him might get swapped out, but some of it might not. Now, this could pose a problem. Say if you sold a lot of stuff to the trader and he gets rid of a lot of the stuff that you haven't sold to him, leaving all the stuff you did sell to him, that could pose a problem, right? Because that means then, say if you like sold a load of pistols to him like in the last three days, and then for some reason he goes ahead and doesn't swap out those pistols, then you know you can't sell any more pistols to him, which is going to be really sucky. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. The first thing I want to show you is how to make the trader reset every day, which is actually a very simple X path. If you followed the last episode, it's a very simple X path to use. Um, and then I also want to show you how to adjust the min and max inventory and a bug that I have found with adjusting this value, because there is a bug that I found adjusting this and it's worth talking about because otherwise you will run into some red text. And if you don't have access to the core game code to see exactly what's happening, you'll be very confused. Um, so I'm going to show you what we can do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, let's go and make the trader restock his inventory every single day and vending machines restock every 21 days because it seems kind of weird that vending machines would just restock right and that seems kind of weird so we're going to adjust both the traders and the vending machines so for the main trader, remember we want the ID equals 1. And for the vending machine, the ID equals 4. So we're going to go ahead and do some very similar X path to make this work. So because we're changing the value of an attribute in the trader, so what we're actually changing right now is the um, we're going to change the reset interval attribute in the trader info element. So to change the attribute, remember, we use the set attribute X path. So we're going to go ahead and use set attribute. And then the X path for this one is going to be exactly the same as the one above, trader underscore info. And then we want the one whose ID equals one. And then the name of the attribute we want to change is reset interval with an underscore in between them, like that. Um, yep, reset interval. And then when we close out this, the value we want to set it to is one. So if it's set to one, that means he will restock every single day. Now, to make the vending machines stock every 21 days, we can pretty much just copy this whole thing. But then in our X path, we're going to set the trader info ID to 4. Remember, ID 4, at least in Alpha 18, is for the vending machines. This is most likely going to change in Alpha 19 with the introduction of like the, the specialized traders and stuff. But for now, 
it's going to be ID number four. So when Alpha 19 does roll around and, you know, this breaks for some reason, uh, yeah, just go and check the IDs and adjust it. And all we need to do is change the value right here to 21. So this should make the trader um, buy and sell or reset stuff every day. And the vending machine will reset stuff every 21 days. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look in game to verify that that works. And you'll find, I think, that it does. Let's go ahead and uh, play in here. And let's go straight in game, have a launch this up and see. So luckily for me, we're in a world where there's a trader like right next to us. So we can go ahead and use that trader that we found. And we're going to go creative debug and I just need to set my time back and I get object reference not set to store object and that's probably because the world's not loaded there we go and now executing uh, executing set time time set to 9 a.m. on day one good 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 okay so let's go ahead and make our way into the trader and oh, over there hello so now we should be able to go into this guy, and um, we're going to go ahead first and reset his inventory. And then, if we go into the inventory right here, we should see that he will now restock, instead of on day 4, he will now restock on day 2. How awesome is that? Very, very good. So once day 2 comes around, we oh, should see some yeah, completely new inventory. Check back again, and I may have what you're looking for. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the vending machines now. If I go into the vending machines right here, you can now see that instead of restocking on day 2, the next restock date is going to be day 22. Oh boy. So yeah, once we buy all the stuff in this vending machine, we're going to have to wait a really, really long time before it's actually going to go ahead and restock again. Okay, that's that bit. That's that bit all covered. Next thing I want to cover is how to make the trader stock more items. Okay, so this is going to be looking now at this guy here. We're going to be looking at the min inventory, the max inventory, and the min and max items swapped. Okay, so... The min inventory is the least amount of stuff he'll stock when a reset happens. The max inventory is, of course, the maximum amount. Then the min and max item swapped is whenever the reset happens, how many of the items he currently has is he going to swap out to then replace with new ones, right? That's all that's going to, uh, that's all these things mean. So what we can do now is let's go and say we're going to make the trader have more items and swap all items each time he resets okay so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to go again we need the set attribute x path and pretty much we can copy this one because we're, we're working from trader id equals one so we may as well save ourselves a little bit of time and copy this one a few times so we're going to need four of these and then we're going to need to go ahead and just change the names of these um things so we've got min inventory and max inventory so we're going to put min inventory in this one and max inventory in this one so just change min to max there and then we want min item swapped and max item swapped okay so we want this guy min item swapped so let's go and copy this guy so you can go here and then max item swapped is going to go here there you go so just like that we've gone ahead and set it up so it's default values let's go and put the defaults in first and we'll adjust them so it's default with 40 and 80 and then this was 20 and 20. Okay. Now, this is where we have to be careful. Okay. So a note that we're going to add. Note. Of great importance. This one is something we want to, to always be remembering. Okay. Now, we always want, always make sure max items uh, or max inventory is strictly two times min inventory. Now, the main reason that we have to do this is because there is a bug in the code that will look for the difference between the min inventory and the max inventory. Now, if your min inventory is not twice as great, this difference will be negative, and then it will throw you um, an out-of-range exception, um, which will be very hard to diagnose. Let me go ahead and show you. So let's, for example, say I said the min is 40 and the max is 40, right? So currently this looks like a really harmless change. Let's go and show you that it's going to bug out. Uh, it's going to bug out really bad, and this is why I wanted to highlight this to you, because 
yeah, unless you've got like things like tools like DN Spy um, and are able to tap into the Assembly C Sharp DLL to actually have a look and see what's going on and to trace the exception back to the source, is very hard to diagnose because you'll find that a lot of times a red text gives you very little info about what's actually going on. Okay, so this X path, as it currently stands, or these changes are going to completely wreck the trader. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna completely wreck the trader and the UI and everything, and it's gonna it's gonna go horribly wrong and send us red text. This is what I think it's gonna do. Um, so yeah, I think this is a bug, um, and it shouldn't be like this. But yeah, it it seems that they have made some weird calculations right here. Okay, we have so, great price. If I go into this guy uh, and see your inventory, I think right now he might be fine. Yeah, so right now he's gonna be fine. Oh, but what we're gonna do? Check back again, and I may have what you're looking is for. We're going to go ahead and reset his inventory. Then we're going to go in and have a look. And you can see, uh oh, argument out of range exception. Argument out of range must be positive. Okay, parameter name equals max value. Okay, so what this is doing, um, I will show you just for you, um, just for you guys who are actually interested. I will show you how to trace a bug if you do happen to have the access to the assemblies code, uh, which you can. And I will set up a tutorial on how to do that at some point. But for right now, I'm going to show you how you would trace that bug. So the first thing you want to do is to find that exception. Um, you want to go into your seven days to die data folder your output logs are going to be here so right now for me it is the 28th of march and it's like nearly one in the morning so we want to check this one which is where it went wrong so we're going to go, go ahead and open this up and this will actually give you more information about your error so we're going to scroll down until we find where the uh, red text would have happened unfortunately it doesn't show the color of the text but it's pretty easy to see here we go argument out of range exception must be positive okay so this is uh, this is the one that went completely wrong so essentially um this is a game random variable and the bit you want to see here is this guy um the function or the method that's calling this is trader inventory requested okay so i'm going to go into dn spy right here and i'm going to show you um this in dn spy just so you can see um so we've got trader inventory. i should be in trader manager already um, and then trader inventory requested is what I want to look for. So yeah, as you can see, I've already got um, trader manager right here. And then I've got uh, trader inventory requested. So this is the function that's going to cause the issue. Let me go ahead and open this out a bit so you can see. So what this is essentially doing is it's getting a list of the trader IDs. Uh, if it's null, then just return. Um, if the reset interval is less than one, it's going to return. So if you do have a reset interval less than one, it's going to also just not do anything. Um, so this kind of works out the reset time but then what you want to do is go ahead and find this one this is where it goes wrong the max items it's going to reset is um get game random slash random range now what it does what it should do is it should go between the min inventory and the max inventory but for some reason you can see that the trader info uh max inventory might it's, it's actually got this extra minus uh min inventory so for example uh what's going to happen is if i if i copy this i'll show you uh, real quick what this is going to do um because yeah this is really weird so this is what it should do um it should pick a random number between the min and the max range but this is where the must be positive thing is going to occur. So if I go into if I go into here, right, and we're going to go to traders, this is the little function that um, is actually being called. So what the function I believe should be is this. So what I should do is um, because we got 40 and 40, it should go random range 40, 40. Right, it should go ahead and do this. However, what it actually does is it goes random range 40, 40 minus 40. Whoa, uh -oh. and then because 40 minus 40 is less than the, the initial 40, boom, error, die, awful. Okay, now this is why it needs to be doubled because uh, yeah, th this I believe is 
bugs. This shouldn't be this extra this extra thing here shouldn't be in the code. Um, I might actually submit that as a bug report as well because that seems very very weird. But yeah, this is what this is what happens because this pretty much um, gives you a random range which has a zero va uh, a zero value, which is fine. Um, this will always select forty, but this one is uh, set setting the maximum less than the minimum, and therefore it's not positive. The maximum is not positive when subtracted from the minimum, and that's where you get the uh, the negative value. So if you guys are a bit more of a software heads, you might understand what I'm talking about. If not. Don't worry, this is just to kind of complete my argument on why it has to be double. Because if it's not double, if it's not double this, um, so if the value is not double, the min value, the second argument will always be less than the first, thus throwing the error of being not positive. So for example, if I set this to sit, let's, let's say, okay, well, couldn't I just set this to 40 to 41 to get rid of this? Well, let's go and work this through here. If it was actually done correctly, it would do this, right? However, um, this time, if we were to go ahead and do this, it would change this value right here, uh, which actually happens to, which turns into random range, um, and then 41 okay now unfortunately what this what this does is then because one is less than 40 um so then because so this time because one is less than 40 um the second argument the maximum argument is less than the minimum argument therefore you get the error die awful okay so why it has to be double uh, is let's go ahead and do it with 80 and i'll work through the example with you there so if we had uh, the maximum entry of 80 the correct way that I think it should work is it would do this. It would, se it would select a random number between 40 and 80, and we'll go from there. What it's actually going to do is it's going to go um, a random number between 40 and 80 minus 40, which is literally just the random number 40 and 40. And in this case, um, the min and max are equal. So min equals max. Okay, good job, bro. So this is why the max has to be at least double the minimum i think you can probably set the max over this but for safety i would just say set it exactly double the minimum and then i would actually say i'd actually argue as well that the min inventory is actually the the true amount that the trader is going to stock so if you so currently the trader will stock 40 things if you want the trader to stock um, 120 things you would change this one to 120 and then this one you need to double it so you'd be 240 okay and then this one shows you how many items the trader swaps. All you have to do then is if you want him to swap everything, you'd say min item swapped and max item swapped are both going to be 120. So yeah, that's the um, that's the little bug that I just wanted to illustrate to you guys. So now if we go back in game, we should find that this actually works now and doesn't give us any more red text. So we're going to reset his inventory, go in game, and we shouldn't get any more red text now. And I will show you that this should be just fine. But yeah, I think that's an oversight just by whoever programmed the trader system this go around. Seems really odd, um, and that's not really documented anywhere as to why that is. So yeah, it's a really odd, really odd thing that I've never seen. In, it, it, it never used to happen in previous XMLs, right? We never had it so that um, it had to be double. In Alpha 16, for example, when I made Fennec Mod and adjusted the traders, that was never an issue. So there is some underlying bug there that's causing uh, all kinds of havoc. So let's go creative, and we'll go debug, and this time, yes it is, right, let's go ahead and go admin options, restock inventory, and now we should see it just fine, there we go, as you can see now, he stocks a load more, look at that, so now this guy stocks a ton more in inventory in here, and he should also, he doesn't stock more in the secret stash, but we'll get into that bit in a little while, but yeah, this is, um, this is now how to make the trader stock more info uh, or more uh, inventory by default so you can see now he's got like loads of iron crossword bolts he's got pretty much tons of stuff a thousand bullet casings so now the trade is actually really good he's stocking a ton of stuff that we can go ahead and buy so if we look at the mods for example he's now stocking a ton of them so we've got you know the helmet light we've got the insulated liner cover those the cooling mesh the water purifier storage pocket so he's actually stocking a good amount of stuff here now um i don't know if there's anyone's for the magazines i don't think there is but yeah we should see um Let's see. So yeah, we should see if I just type in um, if I type in magazine 
or book. There you go. So if we type in book, you can see um, that we've got loads of books now. So we've got the Pistol Pete one, Magnum Enforcer. As you can see, loads of stuff in there. So now you can see this will allow the trader to stock more books and stuff as well, which is really, really nice. So yeah, this is how you go ahead and safely Come back allow tomorrow. the trader to yeah, go ahead and daily. stock more inventory, which is really, really nice. All right, so that was a little bit of a delve into the inner workings of the code, guys, and I know that was a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a crazy one. But this was uh, this is going to be a slightly shorter episode because I think just the concept of that alone is pretty much worth its own episode. So yeah, note of great importance: always make sure max inventory is strictly two times min inventory. That is the only thing that you need to worry about. Okay, so um, now if you want to go ahead and adjust the traders um, to stock more stuff. That is how you would go ahead and do it safely without causing red text. But, you know, for you, uh, for you software heads among you who wanted to figure out why that actually happened, um, that is how I would go ahead and stack trace a bug um, just to see if it was an XML. If it wasn't an XML issue, I'd go ahead and see what the code was actually looking for and then see if there was, uh, see if I broke the code. And in this case, yes, I broke the code because, yeah, there was there's something very weird in there. So we're going to go ahead, guys, and end off the episode right here. So thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're actually going to go ahead and delve in a little bit deeper into this section right here the trader item groups what all this means and how we adjust it so we're gonna go into this in a little bit in a little bit guys in the next one so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one so till then bye